Hello and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will look at how to use the tool DC3DD to wipe, clone, and image media devices. Imaging is the process of making a bit-for-bit -bit copy of a disk. The basic tool that is on every Linux distro is DD, which is a utility designed to copy bits of data from one location to another. The locations can be either raw disks or files. DC3DD is an enhanced version of DD with added features for computer forensics and comes with a Kane distro. Features include on-the-fly hashing with multiple algorithms, split output files, pattern wiping, progress meter, and file verification. Let's take a look at the devices on our system. I'm going to do a sudo ls block dash capital S. It's going to list out all the devices on our system. SDC is going to be our staging drive. It's a 16 gig thumb drive. SDD is the evidence hard drive that we're going to image. It's one gig. And SDE is going to be our clone drive, another 16 gig USB. I'm going to create a mount point called slash mnthd and my intention is to mount the staging drive to it. So I'm going to do a sudo make dir or slash mnt slash hd and then do a sudo mount slash dev slash sdc1 2 slash mnthd. So we're going to use DC3DD to wipe a device. We have a 16 gig USB that we're going to use as our clone media. We're going to do sudo DC3DD wipe equals slash dev SDE. And that's pretty much all you need to do. But in this case, I'm going to add the pat equals FF just for demo purposes. So what this is going to do is that it's going to write the pattern FF in binary. So it's going to be all ones to that drive. By default, if you don't specify the pattern, zeros will be used to wipe that device. Now that it's done wiping, let's verify with the XXD command and make sure that we see all ones in that drive. And there's our confirmation. Even though Linux provides for software write blocking, don't forget to use a hardware write blocker whenever possible. Next, let's take a look at how to use DC3DD to clone a device. We will clone our 1 gig SSD to our 16 gig USB. We will be using the MD5 hash to keep a log. So I'm going to do sudo DC3DD. Our input is going to be the SSD, which is on SDD. Our output file, we're basically going to point it at the 16 gig thumb drive. We are going to use a MD5 hash. And we're going to keep a log on our staging media. Just going to call it clone log. There it goes. All right, and it's done. So it's always a good idea to review the logs and the output. So here we can see the DC3DD it tells you this is the version. We started on this date and time. And this is the command line that we typed, right? We are looking at input of SDD which is our one gig SSD. The output is going to go directly to the 16 gig thumb drive. We're using the MD5 hash algorithm. And then this is where the log is going to go. And when it probed the device, it saw the, about 2 million sectors, which is about 1 million or 1 gig bytes. Sector size is 512. So that's the amount of data copied. 
And so this is what you always want to look for is you want to look for the number of sectors in, make sure that it matches the number of sectors out. Okay, and you also want to make sure that there's no bad sectors. And lastly, here is the MD5 of our evidence. All right, and then lastly, again, with the timestamp, so you know when it started, when it ended. So once again, it's always a good idea to review the logs. So let's go ahead and take a look at our log. And our log basically is the same thing as the output. So we're all good there. Now, it is best practice to verify an image after creation. So let's use the DC3DD command to verify the clone. The key here is that because the clone drive is much larger than the original, you can't just hash the entire clone. The hashes will be different. You need to limit the number of sectors to be hashed to be exactly the number of sectors contained in the original evidence item. So let's go ahead and do a sudo dc3dd. Input file this time is going to be the clone. All right, so it's going to be sde. The output we're going to throw through the dev null. This is a special device called the black hole. You can know the bit bucket. You can continually put data in there and it will take no time and no space so because in this case we don't really care about the output we're just reading it in so we can hash it so that's why we're sending it to dev null and then here's the trick you have to add a count and the count has to be the exact same number of sectors as the input so because we have the log right there we can just go and copy and paste and once again we want to run the md5 hash and then you want to log it in a log file. All right, so now it's reading back the clone. And once again, you want to read all the output, right? So the number of sectors in matches the number of sectors out no bad sectors and then if you recall this was the same md5 that was generated when it created the clone so we are good there so we're able to completely generate a clone and then also verify the clone all right next we are going to use dc3dd to image a device to a DD file or otherwise known as a raw output file. So we're going to do sudo dc3dd. Once again, for our input is going to be sdd. And this time our output, instead of going directly to a device, we are going to put it into the staging media. And this is the name we're going to call it. A lot of times it's probably good nomenclature to call it by the evidence number name, right? Because this is a unique uh, identifier. So now you know what it is. Again, we're going to use a hash algorithm of MD5. And once again, we want to keep our log. All right. And so there it goes. So once again, the difference is that this time, the output is going to be actually a file, right? It's going to be a one gig file that is going to be in that location versus the last time we did a clone, the output basically just goes to that drive. All right, so once again, it's good practice to look at the output and the logs. So here we see uh, that it sees the same device once again, the input and output sectors match. That's a good thing. There's no bad sectors. And then once again, if you remember the MD5, once again, it matches from when we did a clone, which is good because we did not change the evidence. So again, you want to take a look at the log file, which should be the same thing as what's on the screen. But just for good practice, you should take a look at it. And that confirms that it is the same thing. And... The last thing we should always do again is to 
uh, hash the output file. So actually, let's take a look at the output file. Let's see what we have there. I'm going to use the LH options, the LS, so we can see the sizes. All right, so here's the logs, right? We did the um, clone originally, so there's the clone log. We verified the clone, and now we did the imaging. And then here is our image, right? So this is a one gig file because it's a raw image. It's the exact same size as the original data. In order to hash, we can just read that file back, right? So we can do a DC3DD input of MNT HDBM 75309.dd. The output, once again, we don't really care, so we're going to throw it away. And make sure you do specify an output because if you don't specify an output, it is going to go to your screen by default. And you don't want all those things flashing up on your screen. And once again, we are going to do a log file. Okay, so this is reading back that one gig file. And once again, Take a look at all the output. You don't see any errors. Uh, the number of sectors in matches the number of sectors out. And the MD5, once again, is the same. So that's great news. There is another way we can use to verify the MD5. And that's by using the MD5 sum command. And what you can do is just point that literally to the image and then hit return, and then at some point it will come back and give you the MD5. And so we can again uh, visually verify that the MD5s do match. One drawback on using the MD5 sum program is that there is no status. Remember when we were running DC3DD, there was a status telling you what percent uh, it was doing and how long it's taking and so forth. So you know it's doing something. With MD5 sum, if it's a large file, it could sit there for quite a while and not come back and give you anything. And the other thing about MD5 sum is that the output just goes onto the screen by default, but you can redirect it into a file if you want to keep that file. If you notice, with the output of DC3DD is one gigantic file. So if this was a four terabyte hard drive that was the evidence you would have a four terabyte file uh, and sometimes it's not convenient to have uh, such large files depending on what file system you're using as your staging drive so we're going to learn another program that will actually split it up into smaller segments I'm right, going to specify sudo dc3dd input file slash dev sdd hash is going to be md5. I'm going to specify the log file. Then we're going to, instead of specifying an output file, where it goes to a device or a file, we're going to do a pipe so it goes into a separate program. And the program we're going to use is called split. And with split, we're going to have a couple of different options. The dash A with a number will give us the number of character lengths for our suffix. Dash D is going to indicate that we want numerical suffixes starting at zero. I'm going to use dash B to limit the byte size of each file to 300 megabytes. And we're going to specify a dash because this is where it is expecting a file. However, we are piping it, so we're going to tell it to look at standard in. And then lastly, the path name to where we want the files to go. All right, and when it's done, you definitely want to verify that there's no errors. And we see that the MD5 is still the same. So let's go ahead and do an LS 
dash lh to take a look at the folder here to see what we have. So this is now the output. Instead of having one gigantic one gig file, we split these up into files that are no bigger than 300 megabytes. And so in this case, there are four segments starting with 000 and going up to 003. All right, so once again, after we finish imaging, we should always verify the images were written out properly by doing a hash. So this time, because we have a set of DD images, we can't just MD5 each one because it would be four separate MD5s. What we need to do is combine all the segments back together using the cat command and then piping that to MD5 sum. So this should produce the proper MD5, which it does. And once again, you can redirect that output into a log file. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we learned about imaging. We use the DC3DD tool to wipe a drive, clone a drive, and to create a raw image of a drive. We use the command split to convert a large image file into smaller sized files. Lastly, we looked at using MD5SUM to verify hashes of our raw images. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.